Well, you know when you're into it this deep, you're in trouble. So, since the last video, I found um, three additional problems to this receiver. One was, as I mentioned before, the tuner. The FM wouldn't lock on, and it wouldn't bring in uh, stereo. So, uh, there was one variable resistor I had to fiddle with a little bit to get that working. And then I also adjusted another variable resistor on the tuner uh, to get the signal strength to be a little bit more accurate to what the reality is because it would say that there's full signal even when it wasn't tuned into a station so I adjusted that and then I found the AM section was completely dead and so I had to adjust the variable resistor on that one as well and I got that thing to work so I've got that working for now and that probably indicates the capacitors have aged and they've drifted their values a little bit Either that or there's the value on their variable resistors have drifted a little bit. But uh, anyway, that's working now. It seems to be working fine. But I'm at this stage because I've got two more problems that I'm trying to track down. And one of them's not really too big of a deal. And it may just be the way this thing is made. I don't know. I can't really find any videos on YouTube. There's only two videos on YouTube that actually demo this stereo receiver. V West Life has one and there's another one that I found and neither of them can I tell for certain if they have the same problem or not. So what am I talking about? Well the right channel is slightly lower than the left channel but this only shows up at really extremely low volume levels and you can also see it on the display. Now I did go ahead when I first noticed this I swapped my jumper cables around, crisscrossed them between the channels, and the problem followed the channel. So then I went back and uh, swapped the cables themselves just to make sure it wasn't the cable that was causing the problem. And it remained, uh, it was basically ended up being that it was the channel that it switched to and not the cable. So I ruled out the amplifier section as being the problem. So we're on the preamp section now. And basically the way this thing works is that all of the inputs come in to this selector board down here and it's also an EQ board for that uh, phono cartridge selector that's part of this section back here. It's nice that Sansui's actually got a, li a line uh, on these boards to indicate the various sections they have that on the tuner as well See up there, you see that line right there. The way I've got that isolated out, so it makes it very nice. And I've also got these connectors labeled as well under here. So there's a there's one for the tuner. There's one for the the uh, uh, video in, and there's a section for the tone control. That's this guy right here, and uh, stuff like that. So all the inputs come into this board. And they're controlled from the front panel through these ribbon cables. Now there's one up, this one right here. And there's also another one going to the tuner as well. And I'm sure that's for the st station preset and, you know, the other controls around here. The tuning and stuff like that. So, I'm at the preamp section. So the problem here is somewhere between the front control board and the selector board because that's where everything goes basically it goes into the selector board comes out to the volume control this potentiometer and then it comes out of the volume the potentiometer into the rest of this and it does what it needs to do or whatever and then it comes out right in the middle right behind this vacuum fluorescent display and goes back into the selector board and uh, there's a connector under this ribbon cable it plugs into. And I uh, checked it out with the voltmeter, and that's a direct connection from that connector to the other connector, which then runs all the way over here, and it's this gray cable right here, and that ends up going to the uh, preamp board on the back to the jacks here. And the only reason they've got it separated is because, as I found out, that's also part of the protection circuit. So when I unplug either that one or this one, it will not come out of protection and if I unplug it while it's on it just goes into protection and the protection light protector as they call it lights up on the display and flashes red and that's something else I've noticed this doesn't always flash when you first turn the receiver on 
it seems to more often when the receiver's been sitting for a while, but I'm not entirely certain what Sansu he had in mind for that, because every receiver I've ever had, that protector just circuit just works, regardless of how long the receiver's been on or whatever. It's when it's shut off for a while that it comes on. You noticed in that last video, I plugged it in. I didn't know that that power switch was actually pushed in, and it, that protector didn't flash, but it does usually now. You can you see there it's going right now. So it's it seems to be kind of hit or miss as what it decides to actually do that. There's two reasons for the volume level to be lower on one channel than the other, assuming your cables back here are fine. Um, and the problem's not the amplifier, of course. One is the potentiometer, and that could be, you know, dirty contacts inside of here. Um, and it's causing more resistance on one channel than the other. And so when you turn the potentiometer at the lower end of the travel there, the problem is obvious. The, the, there's an imbalance between the two channels because of extra resistance. And once you increase it, it pretty much goes away. You can see I've got peaking pretty good there. But it's still not perfect at low volume lows like oh just a little bit here you gotta get really low too it's a lot better now than it was and now we'll go over to the right channel and you can see there's really nothing at all coming out of it now I cleaned the potentiometer I took this all apart and pulled it out as much as I could and I started tracing some stuff on here because while I did print out the service manual and the schematic whoever scanned this in did a horrible job because I can't read any of it the the lettering the fine lettering is so blurry and stuff I can't I can't read it I can't make out what it says some of it's fine but a lot of it I can't make out so so what I ended up finding out is that the volume control outputs the left and the right channels up here and the center right here is the common ground and I put the meter to both of these here and they both have equal resistance all the way through the travel on this so I know the problem is at least not this side of the potentiometer so I moved along and I figured out where the heck this potentiometer was going and it's going into a few places but it's basically got a straight shot to these two capacitors right here and they're actually labeled uh, C7L and C7R so left channel and right channel. There's also two more capacitors right up here as well that it's going to. Again they're labeled C6R and C6L. And what I found out was that once I got up here and tested it that there was about a 10 or 12 ohm variance between the left channel and the right channel at these capacitors right here so there could be something with these capacitors right in here that's causing a little bit of extra resistance but I don't know that that's really the problem because I've got another problem and that is the video source I'm gonna crank this up here a little bit And when I push that, you can still hear the music coming through. And it comes through on this channel as well. It's not muting this audio coming from the tuner. In fact, uh, this is the same thing with no matter, regardless of what other input I've got selected here, the audio bleeds through the video and I also plugged in the my uh, phone directly into one of the video inputs just to see and um, yeah it's just basically mixing the sound so whatever's supposed to be isolating this is not doing that when I first noticed that particular problem it was it was actually cutting out the right channel I don't know why it's not now 
but it was cutting that channel out and it was not cutting this one out so at some point here whatever I've done has changed something with this thing I don't know so I gotta figure out what exactly isolates the audio when you push this in and then you would switch between disc player VCR B and VCR A and all three of these uh, doesn't matter which one I push uh, I still get audio bleed through and walk out with up to seven hundred and fifty dollars starting January and granted it's reduced back to the light. up to a seven hundred fifty dollar refund advance one hundred percent accuracy maximum refund guaranteed drop one of our sixty three hundred locations I'm probably okay with the volume level as it is because before I had to crank this volume up to three before I'd get even distribution on the on the peak level right here on the so that's sort of been resolved I think it's just the case that this potentiometer is just the way that these things are the nature of the beast that they're not perfectly balanced when they're at low the low spectrum of the travel I think that's all that's going on with this thing but there's clearly some sort of an audio bleed coming through the video selector the video source here and the tuner and everything else interesting note though that the front panel on this thing that was cake to take off. It was just four screws. There's two on the top and then the two on the bottom is actually the the bottom cover screws through and, and, and secures this front panel. You can see how they've got that everything attached in there. And this just slides off all in one piece. It's not any anything special as far as that goes. There's a little spring right there. Not sure what that goes to, but uh, yeah. So that's where we're at right now, and you can see that's the that's the bulb right there that illuminates that volume control. The numbers back here. So I might replace that with an LED. I, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I'd hate for that thing to burn out and then have to do this all over again because getting the faceplate off is easy, but getting this board away from the from the chassis back here is a bitch because these cables are not very long and they don't unplug from up here as I found out so I'd have to undo the wire strap that's down here and undo the wire strap here and actually unplug them from the board here so to pull this thing out and I'm, I may have to do that anyway I don't know but if I end up having to go that far I might just go ahead and replace that bulb anyway so I gotta figure out what's going on with the video source selector though now I'm going to test the tape monitor too on this thing and see if the problem exists there as well. So one problem does still remain however even after I've cleaned it and everything and it seems like it's a little bit more balanced now than it was before. Definitely seems like it's an improvement but I've got the volume completely turned down right now and there's still some audio coming through the speaker. And there's none coming through this side. It might be a very faint amount, but it's nowhere near as much as that side. So there's still an imbalance somehow. It's almost as if the input on that channel, on the left channel, is greater than the potentiometer can actually reduce. I'm not sure about that. I still don't know what to do about it because I, you know, I could start replacing capacitors, but um, I'm honestly I'm stumped as to which ones to replace right at the moment, without completely removing this panel at least enough to where I can f flip it down to gain complete full and unobstructed access to the back. I really can't trace it out. And the other problem too is that there's several capacitors that are behind this uh, vacuum fluorescent display so um, I'm assuming those capacitors are for the vacuum fluorescent display itself but I don't know that for sure at this point in time so if any of those are related to this this little volume this this imbalance here um, the only way I'd be able to change them is to desolder this entire panel and there's several contacts to desolder give my uh, new desoldering gun a good workout though that's for sure but um, I don't know 
I mean, this is something I could live with, but my problem is, is that it might be, uh, it might be just a, an initial symptom of something that's a little bit not quite right or a component that's starting to fail. I'm guessing a capacitor. I mean, an electrolytic capacitor might be drying out, um, causing some kind of an imbalance. Um, either going open or shorting, or uh, or too much re uh, resistance uh, through the capacitor as it ages. So I'm not really sure what to make of it right now. But I definitely have a problem. The video source selector, this one does bleed through the heaviest. Uh, the Tape 2 monitor does not. It appears to work just the same as the rest of them. But there is still some tuner bleed through on all of them when I crank up the volume past probably five or six, you can start hearing it. And that might just be the way these things are. Um, you know, a strong input source from a CD player or a tape deck or something, you wouldn't notice it. But like a, you know, a weaker signal from a cell phone or something that's only half volume or something like that, it definitely start to hear that. So. Um, I'm not really sure what to make of it. I, I'm guessing the problem with the video source has to be on this selector board somewhere. And there are a few transistors down in here, which might be to blame. There's also several capacitors and some resistors. And, uh... Huh. You know, that resistor right there... Looks like it might have some kind of an issue. Huh. Yeah, I'll have to take a look at that. I think this board looks like it's going to be fairly easy to pull out. So <clears throat> I think I'm going to assume that most of my problems are somewhere, somehow related to this board. So in an attempt to figure out if I've got a problem in the selector board or not, I went ahead and took it out. Hopefully I can remember which plugs went where. They pretty much line up to where they came out of, so hopefully they'll go back in that way. But anyway, I sat here and tested all these capacitors on this board and they all tested fine on my cap checker here and I tested all the diodes and stuff that were on this board and that one capacitor or excuse me that one resistor right there that's just manufactured that way it tests fine so there's nothing wrong with that according to the service manual there is a mute channel on the video and audio portion goes into here. I think it's that one right there or one of them. I can't remember which one now. But there's a muting button or a muting option that goes between this and the uh multiplex or the uh not the multiplexer multi-dimension uh board. And uh, there's also uh that also goes to the video input board as well. And that could be the problem, but I'm not sure if that's to mute the audio coming from the AV portion or if that's to uh, mute the uh, other inputs when the audio video board is engaged from the, the front button right here. So right now I'm going to go ahead and put this board back in because I don't really see anything obviously wrong with it. And it's fairly easy to take out and put back in. So... I'm not going to worry about this right now. The caps are fine, the resistors are fine, the diodes are fine. The other thing too is that there is a muting channel that goes up um, from the main control board right here on the front. And it goes out one of these, J, it goes out JP10 right here. And then it goes up and around this cable and this cable right here and goes to this board on the back so I'm gonna take this board off if I can and check it out because there's this thing's riddled with capacitors everywhere they call this a PLL synth slash uh, control board in the service manual so um, maybe the problem will end up being in there there might actually be a good chance of all my problems being related to the same thing causing the problem hopefully I've noticed that the volume control it's still a little bit better than what it was, I think, but I'm pretty sure that it's really not a whole lot better because one of the things I notice is that that problem occurs. Uh, it's a little bit more obvious when I've got the loudness on than when I don't. So um, 
the resistance that I'm seeing up here in these capa these yeah these capacitors right here. Uh, I don't think they're necessarily the fault of the capacitors because I don't have any electrolytics up in here. So if there is a problem, it might be further down the food chain. Um, you know, if th this isn't really a terribly big deal, but I'd like to figure out what the problem is because it's kind of annoying that that doesn't mute the audio. And I think that's the entire problem is it's not muting the audio like it should be. And so I'm going to put this back together and uh, keep looking at it some more. Definitely, uh, definitely get a little bit tired looking at those schematics there on the computer, I'll tell you what. But uh, this is just what you got to do in order to troubleshoot this stuff. Before I go ahead and put this board back in, I want to show you this real quick. All this factory reworking that was done. Absolutely unbelievable. In fact, you can even see some of the traces that were cut right there. It's amazing. In fact, these two capacitors are soldered directly to another uh, couple capacitors up top to give it about a two UF uh, capacitance value instead of one UF. So it's it's a I don't know. It's a lot of reworking done on this board though. So I spent the last few hours dicking with this receiver, it's going through the schematics, trying to look up different schematics for this thing and none of them are entirely complete as I found out. I've pulled the boards, I've checked resistances, I've checked capacitors, I checked all the capacitors on that board. Everything seemed okay, but I still had audio bleed when I'd push the video button in. I'd still hear the tuner, or actually any other source. It was like basically reduced in half and it was mixing the two channels, or the two sources I should say. Well, I'm afraid to admit, but I'm a bit of an idiot. Because I didn't really understand how this receiver worked. Let me just show you here what I found out. Turn it on here. Now, I'll push the video button. This is already in. Okay. Now watch this. <laughs> uh, that is the fader on the video control right there. I thought that just applied to the uh, the uh, picture, not the audio. But yeah, I faded that out. Faded it. Yep. So that's all it was. Oh, it's the simplest things, I tell you. I've been around the world with this receiver trying to figure out what the hell was wrong with it. And what was wrong with it was me. I didn't understand how this thing worked. So, but I got the controls clean, so nothing else. Oh, holy moly. I got to put the thing back together, but... I was planning on taking this off anyway so I could give it a good hand washing under the sink and stuff like that and be able to clean the the uh, display here, make it all pretty. But, uh, yeah, so there's nothing wrong with this receiver. It's just me not understanding how the controls worked. Oh, I feel so stupid sometimes. And honestly, all the capacitors that I've tested on this thing... They're spot-on accurate as far as their rating goes. I mean, they were dead on, so... Uh, I don't think any of the capacitors are bad, and there's no hissing or hum or anything out of the speakers, so... The potentiometer, um, at this point, I have looked over that, checked over that, checked over the circuiting, all this other stuff while I've been dicking with this thing. And, you know, it's still not 100% perfect at the very low end of the turn there but it's significantly better after I've cleaned it and it's also much looser now too so I think I'm just going to uh, call it good because I don't think there's anything else wrong with this so oh 
I guess I'll go ahead and clean the faceplate up and put it back together and uh, that'll probably end it for this video so uh, the next video part three I wish there was actually something to show you on this is to how to fix something but <laughs> this is what happens I don't know anyway so part three I'm gonna demo this receiver I'm gonna play with the video mixing and stuff like that I'm gonna see if I can hook up a VCR or a camcorder or something to this thing because I'm kinda curious uh, how this all works and going through the service manual I found out that the coaxial plugs in the back that's actually an RF converter and it does bring uh, audio and video signal into the receiver here so in theory I think you could use the receiver to record through to a to a VCR or a camcorder straight from your cable box so put out all your video and audio signals through this and then if you want to record anything or mix anything you just do it through the controls so anyway stay tuned for part three and uh, until then see you next time right here on Wayback Tech Channel peace out everyone